Hello and welcome to the Korea Bay Knitting Podcast. Hello and welcome, my name is Rebecca, I'm a knitter and knitwear designer based in Edinburgh and this is a vlog or a podcast all about knitting, what I'm currently knitting on, what I've been knitting on and what I would like to cast on in the not too distant future, along with some yarny acquisitions and I have all of the above today, I have quite a lot to show. I have been away for four weeks, uh, four weeks since my last podcast episode. I spent three of those four weeks in, well, two weeks in Australia, uh, two weeks in New Zealand, a week in Australia, and about half a week traveling there and back. It's a big trip. And then, yeah, I got back a week ago today. I contemplated filming last Friday, but I was very jet lagged and pretty much went straight to bed. <laughs> so that did not happen. But I've had a quiet week. I've done quite a lot of knitting and I'm ready to get back into the swing of podcasting. Um, I shared one video, so I've got three videos in total to share from our trip. The first part of it, which is the first part of Travelling New Zealand, is already live. It went live two weeks ago. The second part will come next week, so if you're interested, stay tuned for that. What do I have today? I have two finished objects. One, two, three, three works in progress plus a bonus, not quite cast on, but very much almost, actually more than that. And I got loads of yarn to show, absolutely loads. Um, I bought some yarn when we were away and then I got went a bit mad this week with, the, with ordering, just went a bit yeah, off the rails and I've ordered a lot of yarn this week. So yeah, let us start, sorry, some of my projects are in the way. There we go. <laughs> Let's start with what I'm wearing. So I'm wearing one of my newest Tolsta Tank samples. Um, I'm wearing a shirt over it because I feel like, unless it's really warm outside, I always feel like a bit naked when I'm wearing tank tops, but actually it's not too bad. Um, this is the vest version. So there are three styles, it's a camisole, a vest and a square neck. This is the vest, so it's like this high neck and armbands. Um, and yeah, I've done, I don't know if you can quite see the details here, but I've done a folded neckband and folded cuffs. Um, the pattern calls for ribbing. It's a really easy modification. I picked the same number of stitches and then I just folded it over and seamed it all down. They're sitting a little tight right now, um, particularly, like, they're not uncomfortable, but I think they're pulling a little bit of the pattern. But I find that Dots Belt stretches out quite a lot with wear, so I'd rather they go there and if they have to, you know, if they stretch out a little bit, it's fine, but it means that when they stretch out a little bit, they're still wearable. I'm just wearing a linen shirt over the top of it because, like I said, I feel a bit... It's still like seven degrees <laughs> in Edinburgh. It doesn't really feel like summer wear. Although I do feel like summer knits. So yeah, oh, it's Knit and Drops Bell in... Um, I don't know the colours, but the navy and like the off-white. Just cream it's called. And yeah, the pattern has gone into test knitting. It went into test knitting at the start of this week. Um, it was a huge test knit. Uh, it was a huge test at call, lots and lots of applicants, but also there is a DK weight and a fingering weight. There are three styles and there are three bus shaping options. <laughs> so I ended up with a DK weight and a four ply tester, but I think we're only sitting at like 50 testers, so it's not crazy. Um, but yeah, I was kind of like, oh my goodness, how will I get all this tested? <laughs> there was a point where if I was going to test every style on both gauges in every size with all three bus shaping options, it was going to be 180 testers. But I've not done that, so that's fine. <laughs> um, yeah, so it's gone into testing and the plan is for it to come out on June 1st. And yeah, it's quite nice, it's just started. Um, it's fun because a lot of testers are like, oh, for my first version I'll do this, for my second version I'll do this, which is exactly how the toaster made me feel, the t-shirt. I just wanna keep making more of them, so it's nice that the same vibe exists in the test group and I've done a lot of my I've done all my samples now like all my DK weight samples so now I'm starting with the fingering weight ones and the modifications and this is my first modification one I knit most of this on like a little bit in Australia and most of it on the flight home um it was really easy it was just stripes I did make one slightly stupid mistake though which is I was trying to work out how far apart I wanted the stripes and I chose to do five rows main colour and two rows contrast colour which in itself is fine <laughs> and it was all fine through the body and then I split for sleeve or well, split for the front and back because uh, it's knit bottom up because all of the versions 
start exactly the same and then only change the top so you know that that way that being said I'm going to try a top down hack for one of my other samples but anyway um when I split for sleeves uh or split under the arm the navy stripe starts at a different start side everyone because it would obviously be like five rows finish here five rows finish here so I ended up with a lot more ends to weave in than I needed to but I just tucked them all into the folded call it the folded neck uh, cuff band and it worked really well so Bit of a stupid mistake, but the consequences were minimal. Okay, let's get into, I guess, first things first are some finished objects. I have two finished objects, two very different finished objects. I'll do them in chronological order, um, but with a disclaimer that this one has not been washed since I came back from holiday because I've been meaning to film all week and I was like, oh, I'll just leave it out in case I film, in case I film, in case I film. Um, it really needs washed. <laughs> but now I'm finally filming it well. This is the um, camisole version, the camisole sample. Um, it's also written in Drops, uh, Drops Bell in the apple green or moss green, I think it's called. This is a perfect example of the fact that it has stretched out a little bit. I wore this a lot with, um, as like a swim cover up. Uh, so I'd, I had like a wrap skirt and then this, and I just chucked it over my swimsuit. If we were like walking down to the beach, Actually, we didn't watch the beach anytime. If we were like going to the pool or like walking anywhere in Australia, um, and the dampness of like putting it on over my swim costume has stretched out these armholes quite a lot. Um, so it's it's not quite indecent, but if I was to wear it in Scotland now, I'd probably be flashing a few people. So I'll get it in the wash. My experience with Drops Bell is it just back up in the wash, which is nice. Um, I knit this entire thing on the flight. So I started it on the tram when we left Edinburgh on the way to New Zealand and I finished it before we landed in New Zealand. So I mean that was a long flight, it was a, a six hour flight and a 15 hour flight, 15 and a half hour flight plus an hour to the tram, two hours in the airport, an hour and a half transfer time. So like plenty plenty of time but it does knit up really really quickly with that loose gauge um, and it was nice that I could finish it and wear, wear it when I was on holiday. I packed a little travel um, wool wash which I think I got free in something once and I've never used and then blocked it when we were staying in Wellington so that was really nice this I think will get a lot of summer wear again I think this will be really nice under this shirt when it gets a little bit warmer and then like if I ever want to go out and get a bit of a suntan this is like my most revealing V <laughs> so yeah that is the good one I do have like a bit of a sun line from this which is nice because I never get any sun in Scotland so it was nice even as in factor 50 to have a little bit of sun. From the camisole to not a camisole. <laughs> um, so I've not blocked this either and the ribs are a bit off center. Um, this is a Pearl Soho classic rib beanie. I bought this yarn at Get Flocked in Christchurch and it is 100% merino. No, it's not. Oh, do I have it? I'm not convinced I do, but also maybe I do. Ah, I do, but I don't have the ball band, which I should have realised. I've got two different skeins, and one is New Zealand Merino, and one was Polworth, and I think this is the Polworth, um, but I could be wrong. So it is, honestly, reminds me a lot of like a Cascade 220 type vibe. It is the same yardage, 220 grams. It's fairly soft, which is quite nice. And I knit this, wait, I'm gonna rustle again. Put that back down. Um, I knit this up on our road trip down the west coast of New Zealand, um, mostly because I was worried it was gonna get really cold in the south and it was still pretty chilly. I'm glad that I had it, but it was a really nice car knitting. It was, um, I only took, I took two toasters and I knit one on the way out and one on the way home. And I learned on the way out that I really enjoyed the ease of just knitting in the round on that flight. I found it very comforting. Um, so I wanted to save the second toaster for the journey home. And I had one other stockinette whip, but like, I don't know, I didn't really feel like it. And then I had a lace knitting project and I definitely didn't feel like that. So this was nice to have a little like in the round project. Um, I struggle a bit with getting hats to fit me and this one fits really well. So I'm pleased about that. I think I must have used 3.5 mil needles. I cast on the adult small. It's a free pattern, it's 100, 108 stitch count one I think. 
But yeah, it's really nice. It needs blocked. It's just sitting a bit, it's just not very neat. Like it could do with a bit of blocking. Um, it got soaked. I wore this on our trip of the Fjordland and it was all like misty and rainy. So it got pretty wet, which I feel like is like half a block of itself. <laughs> um, but yeah, that was really fun. Really nice bit of like casual knitting. Um, didn't require much thought and it was really nice to have it and not have to think about much else. Okay, those are my finished objects. So yeah, um, perfect description of the weather currently in Scotland. A wool beanie and a linen cotton blend camisole. Because it's all over the place. Okay, uh, works in progress. I've got three, no, I've kind of got four. Kind of got four. So this is kind of my acquisition and my, oh yeah, so this was the New Zealand Merino because this was the Polworth. Um, I also got this at, for uh, Get Flock, it's from Wild Earth Yarns. I'd heard a lot about Wild Earth before going to New Zealand and I wanted to get some of their yarn. So I picked up some when I was there, but then they only had the Polworth and I also wanted to get some New Zealand Merino. That's why I've got the pink one, it's all coming back to me. <laughs> um, this again is the same, uh, pretty much the same I think. It is 110 meters per 50 grams. It's this beautiful like undyed color. It's very, very soft. And there's almost a bit of a halo on it now actually. It's quite, quite fuzzy. And a cast on a second hat. So when we went on the ferry journey, I didn't want to take, uh, we didn't take all of our stuff. We just took a carry on to the, this like trip around the Fjordland in the south. And I just took my hat with me. So I was knitting on this. Um, yeah, my plan was to make the weekend hat by Pearl Soho, I tried, no, by Petite Knit. I love how this fits. I don't love the decreases. I'm just kind of over them now because I've made it so many times. So I tried making the weekend hat before and struggled a little bit. Um, so I'm going to attempt to make it again. And yeah, this is just pretty nice. I cast this on on the... Uh, we had to get a water taxi to the other... The, the, we had to go from where we dropped the car, get a water taxi, then get a coach and then get on the overnight ferry because it's not otherwise accessible. So I cast this on in the water taxi and just knit a little bit on it here and there for sort of the 24 hours we were on the boat, which is really nice. It's super, super soft. I don't know when I'll get around to this again. It's just gonna go in a bag for now and I'll pick it up as and when I like it. It's one of those projects that was like very much in, in the moment. Having this hat for now makes me feel like I'm probably not gonna touch it for a little while, but that's fine, that's okay, I don't mind. Um, I do pretty much make beanies every single year and so if I come around to it and decide I want to make another beanie, next year or like the end of the summer that's also completely fine okay let me talk about something that's not currently here which i will show you it's on my blocking mats and i did something kind of silly which is i blocked it yesterday and then i discovered that i don't know what i'd done i used um let me talk about it first it is called the myrtle vest m-y-r-t-l-e myrtle and um, it is a colorwork vest that is coming out in the next edition of the Journal of Scottish Yarns. I've got a picture, I'll pop it here. Um, it is definitely like my most challenging, I guess, but also just the all over the place design that I've come up with. It is uh, it consists of two colourwork bands um, that you steek and then you seam them to the front of a vest. And so there's colourwork coming at the front and then it's a plain stockinette vest. And on my version, I'm going to do some cute little ties at the front. I do think that um, it's got an I-cord finish and I do think that I-cord is a little bit prone to rolling. So I'm going to do some ties on it. Um, and I think that when I rework the pattern for my own, when I release it myself, I think I will add the I-cord ties as standard because I did notice a few testers had that rolling problem. Um, I'm knitting mine in Kinoff of for Apply Held Double. So it's Journal of Scottish Yarns and I wanted to then use a Scottish yarn, but I was on the fence of what yarn to use. I wanted to have a bit of heft so it would like hold its shape well, but also it's a vest, so it had to be like spring appropriate. And I realized that my all time favorite yarn is Kinross for Apply and I should just use that. So I'm using Highland Cow as the main color, which is orange and Porridge as contrast color, which is like an off white. I have lengthened mine a little bit from the pattern. So I did need to get more yarn. Um, my goal is to have it finished by next Friday, a week today. Um, yeah, I mean, disclaimer, this is what it looks like right now. <laughs> um, so this is like basically all the vest portion. You can see the back and the front parts, and then we're gonna 
do the stock knit bands all the way up here, draw the shoulders and add an eye cord all the way around. It's not that much work left to do and the, the colour work bands take me like maybe a couple of hours each so it's not crazy workload um, but it's now the fiddly bits left like this, the colour work, the steaking, seaming, like all the bits I don't like. <laughs> um, but yeah we've got a um, really good gathering, it's a new yarn festival happening next weekend. And my current plan is that I would like to wear this to Willie Good Gathering because I think it'd be a fun piece to wear. It's new, um, it's like a Scottish yarn. It's going to be in a Scottish magazine. It's a new Scottish festival. It feels very apropos to have it ready for them. So that is the plan. Um, yeah, it's always weird when you're working on a magazine because you've kind of gone through so many emotions before it comes out. That by the time it comes out, you're like, oh, nice. <laughs> It's a bit of a weird one. Um, I think because when you're when I self-publish, all the hype is like it all kind of builds. So like it starts here and then it goes all the way up. And I feel like with the magazine, it kind of goes here and then along a little bit, and then you kind of dip off because you finish the test net and you've sent off your samples and you've done everything and you're just like waiting and then it's like, oh, excitement. Um, but it's always just a bit of a weird one, I don't know. So I feel a bit weird about it. But it is my last magazine. I don't have any plans to do any more anytime particularly soon, I don't think. I think that I can say with, with all three of them I don't know, the, I don't know the, the way to say it it's not that I've been disappointed but I've seen I feel felt like I would do things differently with every single one of them um, and that is just a magazine like you're collaborating with somebody else and so it's not 100% your project it's ultimately their finished object that you're contributing to and I find that quite hard um, just in that like I get frustrated because I'm like oh that didn't quite look that way or like I wish I could have fixed that part or I wouldn't have taken that picture that way or like I wouldn't have fit that model to that thing or I wouldn't have picked those colours you know like there's always something that's never quite the way I want to do it myself um, and I don't think it necessarily always results in me producing the very best version of my pattern so I've done all three of them now they're the only I only really want to do Pompom and Lina but Journal of Scottish Yarns is a local to me yard, local to me magazine and I'm really glad I did it and I think this is the perfect example of what I would do for a magazine in the future which is a kind of out there more editorial piece that's not like classic fashion you know it's got some interesting construction to it it's got something a bit different that photographs well um, I'd consider that for magazines in the future but for now I'm parking at the magazines for the rest of this year. I don't think I'll do any more. I mean, I, I, I remember I once said that I was only going to design one knitting pattern. So, you know, anything can happen. But I don't think I'll jump into it again. I think I like the control of doing it all myself. And it's definitely more profitable. Um, I understand why the costs are the way they are, but magazines don't really pay particularly well for designs. So um, it's nice to see things in a magazine. It's really nice to collaborate with other makers. Um, but I'm not desperate to jump in to do any more anytime soon. So I'm savouring this one because it's the last one for the foreseeable future. <laughs> okay, two more works in progress. Let me talk about this one first. I have not touched this in like a week and it feels kind of weird. Um, but I took this with me to New Zealand and I got a lot of work on it when we were there. I told myself I was going to seam this before um, I came to film and I completely forgot to do that. So this is the Sana Cardigan, S-A-N-N-A. -N -N -A. And I, I've got a picture, I'll put in the picture of my first sample, which is a short sleeve version. I love it, it is white, it is lacy, it is like summery. It's amazing. But I also want to make a long sleeve version because I think this is, sorry I've got hiccups. I only ever get these when I'm filming. I think it's the talking that does it. <laughs> um. I, yeah, I wear my Corin cardigan a lot at like trans transitional times of year and this to me feels like the same kind of thing. Short sleeve, long sleeve, op long sleeve option, you can do it in wool, you can do it in cotton, like it serves a lot of, you, you can start wearing it when you maybe put away your, like, your heavier wool sweaters and you can start wearing it before you bring your wool sweaters out again and like if you want to wear it in the peak of summer you can knit it in a cotton or like a linen or something that's a bit wooly, less wooly. But this is what I have. This is my long sleeve sample. Let me just hold up like a panel because I feel like you're not seeing very much of this based on the way I'm holding it up. Hello! So it's basically got these two lace motifs. There's a bottom one and there's a middle one and then it repeats again. 
and it is a very similar construction to my Corrin cardigan because I love the way that fits. It is a drop shoulder. Um, it's got a really fun, you have to, you have to join the, uh, the sleeves. Um, you can seam them, but I don't love to seam, so I'm using a three needle bind off and it leaves this like clean, like super clean sleeve join, which I'm, I really love. And yeah. Um, so it's kind of on pause because I've got two things to finish for next Friday and once I get that finished I'll be back on this because I want it, I want to be wearing it, it's again not quite there yet for Scotland but almost um, and it's up super quickly as well and I don't have anything, I think I'm going into my blue era, I didn't have anything in blue, this will be like one of my first blue knits I think, um, I've got my tights, it's blue, navy blue and then it'll be the next one and yeah. Um, so it looks like. So again, the test net is well underway. There are some really nice coloured ones. There's a dusty pink one that I'm obsessed with. There is a red one I'm also obsessed with. I need to stop making five samples of everything, but I want another colour. <laughs> um, and what would I get? A Cascade 220. I knit most of it when we're away. I split for sleeves when we're away. I knit quite a bit on the way back. Um, and I just had a little bit left to do, I think, when we got home but it was quite nice for when I wanted a more involved project. Um, it's not at all difficult charting. It's two charts, same stitch count. Um, and like, yeah, simple lace, you know, yarn over, so slip knit, tie two together type stuff. So I found it really, really easy to follow. And I like it, it was really fun knitting. It was like just engaging enough, but I could still like watch TV and have the chart open on my phone and not get confused. And the whole thing is um, pretty much described in terms of stitch markers. So you place markers between every single repeat and then it tells you what, like if you're shaping and stuff, you do things up until a certain marker and then you continue in pattern. And that is really helpful. Um, I didn't do that on my first sample because I didn't really think about it. <laughs> and then I did it for my second sample and for the pattern writing and it was like a game changer. It just makes the whole thing way easier to follow and way easier to write up as well, which is always nice. Okay, God, I'm flying through them. I should take it, I'm probably talking too quickly is what the sign that is. So I just mentioned my Tides sweater. Again, I'll put a picture of it. This launches a week today and I feel a bit guilty because I love this pattern. I cast it on at Christmas, so it's been a little while, but um, I left my sample here because it was quite far along and I didn't want to take a full bulky knit with me, like something already in progress with me to New Zealand. But then I came back and I was like, oh, I have to finish this pattern. Originally, today was launch date, but I was not organised enough. And you'll see my sample is still not finished. So that isn't happening. So it's coming out next Friday. Um, the original sample is in brushed alpaca, but I, and I, it's, it's perfect in brushed alpaca. It's so good. Like a double mohair or like that light fluffiness. Um, but I know not everyone is crazy about fluff. So I'm making my second sample in a regular yarn with a mohair. So it's not just like pure fluff and it launches next Friday, so I need to finish the sample by then. Are you ready to see this? It's very, very bright. And now part of me is like, should I have picked some nice pastel colours? <laughs> oh, it's so fun. Okay, no, I love it. I love it, love it, love it. I'll hold it back up so you can see the pattern best. There we go. Oh, it looks so good. I'm so happy. Oh, I'm really chuffed with that, actually. Um, so yeah, it's this fun, like, wavy texture. You can do short, like, I'm doing quite narrow waves here, so four row colour stripes. I think that the original is ten row stripes. There's a cardigan and a sweater in the same, pat in the same pattern. This is the cardigan version. And I just started a sleeve. Um, I decided to do a balloon sleeve option, so there's a fitted sleeve and a balloon sleeve, so lots of options as per always, um, and it's like a 17 stitch gauge I want to say, so it knits up pretty quickly, and yeah because it's launching next Friday I'd like to wear this to the, Scottish, to the really good festival next Friday, um, but I need to finish it before I can do that, so yeah. Um, I got all the body and seamed up and finished last night. I was only like here when we came back from holiday. So I've done all this in a week or less than a week. And I have a week to do two sleeves, two button bands and a collar. But that is fine. I'm using um, Sunday, Santa's Garden Sunday, which I haven't used before, but I quite like it. 
in this lilac and this red. Um, similar to my Lauder red, this is so bright it's blowing out. It's actually quite a washed red, like a washed out red. And I'm holding it with mohair, different mohairs. This one is Gepard Kid Silk Mohair because I wanted to darken up this one a little bit. And this is Poppy by Sandman's Garden, which I think is the matching mohair for that one. So yeah, um, I'm having a lot of fun with it. It's it's a really fun pattern. It, it feels a bit like my leaf and like, it's just fun. And loads of different combinations, loads of different color options. And yeah, I love how the, it's not been blocked, everything's lying a little bit wonky, but I love the way that um, at the shoulder, so that's the middle seam, and then it, the waves come out from the middle seam. I like that a lot. So yeah, um, it's pretty chunky. I mean, like I say, it's still not particularly warm here, so it's gonna be perfect for wearing like with jeans and a t-shirt um, until probably like June, because it does not get warm here very quickly. But I do think my, like if you're in it in a soft, like a lighter yarn, it'd be really, really good for the transition. Um, and I love this stitch pattern so much. I am making a summer, summer pattern out of this, I think. Um, I need to do some swatching, but the yarn arrived today. So yeah, that is my like Willy Wonka color coloured Tides cardigan launching next Friday. I can't believe it's a week till a pattern launch. We're, I'm just not organised. I think because we only got, a, got back last week. It feels like the Lauder launch just happened, even though it was, it'll be four weeks between them. Uh, I've not taken a single picture. My sample's not even finished. The pattern is a tech edit for the final release, so that is good. I am at least on top of the actual pattern. I'm just not on top of any of the visuals. Um, but because it's tides, I really want to take pictures at the marina where we keep our boat. So tomorrow, well, all weekend, we're going down to the boat all weekend and the plan is to take the pictures there of the sample that's already finished and this one we'll just deal with at some point next week, maybe on Thursday night before the pattern launches, depending how quickly I can get my knitting together. <laughs> um, yeah, and then hopefully get back in control of myself for the rest of the pattern launches so that I'm not quite as all over the place. Is this, yeah. Okay, um, two more things, I guess. Two more works in progress, but one, only really one. Um, I cast on a fingering weight toaster. It's not very exciting. I've literally done this much. Um, I'm using Sandra's Garden Thin Lina, Tin Tin Lina, which is um, the same, the same base as Drops Bell. There's like one percent difference in the makeup of this fibre versus Drops Bell, and this is the thin version. So I love all of the not thin versions I've got. So I thought I would just give it a try. And I've cast all. We're going to a gig tonight, and I thought it'd be a good thing to take to a gig. And um, but I also thought I'd be done with the ribbing by now, but the ribbing takes forever because it's tiny. And um, I'm on two and a half mil, two point seven five millimeters for this, and then I go up to three point two five. I'm a very loose knitter. Um. I have a thousand and one toasters I want to knit and this was one of the ones I was trying to prioritise. So I've got a couple of interesting samples I want to do but I'm trying to prioritise the ones like I probably should do a fingering weight because I've not done any fingering weight samples from the pattern so that's a priority. I'm also doing an eye cord, it's a square neck one with an eye cord edging which I think would be really nice so I want to show that one off and the rest all required a bit of thought first. <laughs> so I was like, okay, I'm not gonna start there because it requires too much thought. So I cast that one on um, because I can pretty much just get going and not have to think about anything until the split for sleeves, split under the arm. So that's what I really like about this. Um, it's kind of similar. The t-shirt is the same in the opposite direction. Like you just cast on the neckband and go. But for the tank top, you just cast on the number of stitches you need and you just knit until it measures X amount of centimeters. So just like throwing a toaster out of my bag is so easy and then the top part doesn't take very long it's much less knitting than the rest so hence why I already have like 15 samples okay my last work in progress is not even a work in progress it is um, a ball of yarn in a bag the bag is a new acquisition though it's very cute um I got this on Etsy I will try and link the shop down below if I remember it's a little quilted bag I was going to buy a Willow Bay bag quilted bag I saw it on Instagram and I was like, oh, I'll go buy one. And I op opened my laptop, went to Etsy, and it sold. But then Etsy recommended this one to me, so I bought it. <laughs> so cute. Um, it's not 
yeah, it's just like a cute little cotton bag. Anyway, in here is one giant skein and the needle tips and technically also and this uh, cord. However, the cord is too big. It's my cord number two. I need cord number one, which will be the smaller size to cast on the neckband, which I will not be able to do until I finish the sleeves of my tights cardigan. So it's a whole thought process, but anyway. This is Sandra's Garn double, no, it's called, it's called Ballerina. It's their chunky mohair. I wanted to try it since it came out and did not have a reason to purchase it. Um, however, when the Tolsta tank launches, the Tolsta t-shirt is also getting an update. It's gonna get us a, a page with long sleeve instructions. So if you want to have, if you want to knit as a sweater or as a long sleeve t-shirt, that's already in there. I know a lot of people have hacked it, but I thought I'll just add the instructions anyway for all the sizes. And I'm also gonna add bus shaping. So there's an up to a B cup and then up to a D cup and up to an F cup. Um, I am not particularly busty, so I don't ever need bus shaping. So I never really think about it in patterns, but it feels like a good place to start that both the tank and the t-shirt will have bus shaping. Um, and I thought it'd be fun to test knit the, test knit, test out the long sleeve one with some of this yarn. Um, so it's just huge. It feels like, yeah, someone's just swollen, a, you know, just swollen up a ball of mohair, a giant blueberry. Um, the recommended gauge is 18 stitches. No, that's all right. It's thir 16 stitches, 13 to 16 stitches, which feels awfully like that's not that thick. So my plan is to hold it single and make a toaster long sleeve, which is a 17 stitch gauge. I mean, this I think is still gonna be quite loose, but we're gonna test it and see. A cool, like, what's the word, diaphanous? I do love that word. Like a little bit of a sheer moment could be quite a fun thing. I don't have any like that in my wardrobe. I think I'd wear it in the summer. Um, but yeah, I need to do some swatching and find out. And like I said, I think I'm in my blue era. I keep being able to justify blue purchases because I don't have any blue. <laughs> So I'm like, yeah, I can buy that because I don't have any already and I think it goes quite well with my hair, my skin tone. So this is pending. I feel like, um, I don't know if anyone else has this, but when you're studying for exams, all you can think about and all you can do while you're studying is you're panicking and thinking about that exam. And that exam finishes and you're like, what do I do with my life now? Like, I have all this time. I have all this freedom. What could I do? I feel a little bit like that in that I've got two deadline nets for next Friday and I just want to cast on new things. So next weekend, to be honest, I'm going to be at festival weekend, so I'm not going to be doing that many crazy things. But I guess these are both be finished on like Thursday, hopefully, because I need to get them blocked maybe Wednesday if they need to be washed and blocked. So Thursday night, I'm having a party, an absolute party. I'm casting on everything. <laughs> and I think I'll probably try and cast this on and take it to Willie Good as like my carry around knitting or a toaster, because toaster. Okay, let me take a drink of water. Okay, let's get into some acquisitions. So I have everything that I got in New Zealand. I did not buy any yarn in Australia. Um, and then I came home and just ordered yarn. Just ordered. There's still more coming. There's still quite a lot more coming. And every day I'm looking at more yarn. I do not need more yarn. What I should do is go through my yarn stash because I think that would be a valuable thing to do to make me realise how much yarn I have, but instead I'm just buying more. Um, yeah, basically, and I'm going to a yarn festival in a week, so. Oh no. Um, it's not the end of the world, it's just a bit stupid on me. Um, and I could do with just having a think about what I have. If I, like, this is my all my knitting for the next like four months, if I buy no more yarn, and that seems unlikely. And I already have quite a lot of yarn to knit through, so. Okay, let's start with my New Zealand yarn. Um, I'm just gonna act like I've not filmed anything already for my New Zealand vlog. So if you've watched those, you've either seen this yarn already or spoiler alert, this yarn's coming. So. I'm just gonna empty it all out so that I make sure I've got everything. Yeah, so my very first stop within like a minute, not quite, seven hours of landing was to go to Lupine, I almost forgot what it's called, Lupin, Lupine Fibre Works in, or no it's not called Lupine Yarn Store, Yarn Co, I can't remember, in Auckland. 
super cool yarn shop. They had a very fun little activity going on in the back room. I was very impressed. I was a little bit jealous. It looked really cute. Um, could have spent forever there. Had to walked up a big hill in, in the warm. Um, so I was a bit puffed out and feeling a bit like, ah, and didn't really want to touch yarn, but I don't buy yarn. And so this is what I bought. I bought two skeins. This is called Ahuru. Um, and it is a merino possum blend. Now I spoke about this on the vlog. Possum is a thing and I don't really know what I think about it and I probably should do some more reading as to whether or not it's a good thing or not. Um, possums are a pest in New Zealand and they are culled because they're a pest but some of the ways that they can be culled are not very humane and I don't really know what my opinions are about it. Um, I should have probably read more about it before I bought any but I have landed on to now that I have now left New Zealand I own two skeins of possum yarn which I'm going to knit with and if I ever consider buying more in the future I will have more of a thought about it then but right now I've got it and I'm knit with it. Um, it's in the colour Custard Apple. Um, it's 80% merino, 20% possum. It's very soft so that possum does, it feels almost like felt or like, yeah like felt or like velcro-y almost, velcro, velvety almost sorry. Um, it is 238 meters per 100 grams and it's not super wash and I know exactly what I'm gonna do with this and I didn't realize that until I was thinking about it yesterday and then I really committed to it now um but I've got a test one to do first it is dyed by happy go nitty which I think is a yarn dyer I saw them a couple of places and yeah they also had another interesting blend that was with a local New Zealand sheep um, which I probably would have gotten some if I had a colour there that I was really into. But yeah, that's interesting. It's this kind of like yellowy, like mushy, mushy apple colour. <laughs> um, sort of like a bogey colour, honestly. Like that is the colour I think of this being, like spompy, bogey green. I love it. I think that there's, I've got a, I'm going to do one already. I've already got yarn for it. So this might be version two if it works to do a kind of winter-esque, like a more wintery toaster in wool. And if it works, there might be two versions of that one. Um, so we'll see. But yeah, um, it looks like very fuzzy, very nice. They had loads. They also had a liner and a copy of my pattern, um, which is quite nice because it wasn't long after it came out. And um, I got to show my partner's mum, like she's a, She's like a, she's dabble in knitting. She's not a big, big knitter, but she quite likes to knit. And she knows how to knit. And I was like, da da! And she was like, ah! And she's like, should I buy one? And I was like, no, you shouldn't buy one, it's fine. Um, and I spent the rest of the holiday trying to find it in a yarn shop, so. But yeah, it was very sweet. Um, and she, yeah, it was quite cool to be able to go somewhere with someone and be like, I'm in this book. Um, so, at that point, I did not go to any more yarn shops until, oh, I found the ball band for the pink hat, by the way. Um, it is, oh it's also merino, I thought it was Polworth, it is merino, it is Burnt Hill Yarns, it is 106 metres per 50 grams, colour is Candy Pop, and it's by, it's called Vespers 8 Ply, I forgot I kept that. Uh, so then we didn't, I didn't get any more yarn until Christchurch was on the South Island, and I went to two yarn shops in the day we were in Christchurch, well, a yarn shop and a a dye studio um, I've got some footage of that it'll come out in next week's video but the yarn I bought is from Rebel sorry Outlaw Yarn Company and their yarn is called Rebel um, so I got a few I got um, this is their fingering weight um, which I told myself like finger is a good idea because then it's easier to pack and bring home but also I don't know fingering weight so I should have I don't know probably another tools to do this is the Rebel Light. It is 80% Merino, 20% New Zealand Halfbreed, which is the name of a, of a sheep breed. It's called the Halfbreed as a sheep. 50 grams, 193 meters. This is the color That Golden Shore. They name all of their yarn colorway names after lyrics from songs. I don't know what song this is, but that's what I know. It's really nice. It's like a golden, real golden yellow color. Very rich. And then I got a single skein of um, the Darkness DK and that is because I, they showed me around a little bit, which is really nice. I hadn't like planned to or anything, we got there and she's like, do you want to have a look? And I was like, yes, I'll have a look. 
So I got to see a lot about it and I'll, yeah, I'll show that on the next, next video. But this is, I, I squished it, there was some of this drying. Um, and this is 55% coloured merino, 30% merino and 7% cashgora, which is some kind of mix of, mix of cashmere and angora. It's so soft. So I've just got the one skein in this lovely green colour. Again, I'm terrible at buying single skeins and not knowing what I'll do with it, but oh well. 258 meters. I thought maybe like a fun scarf, um, like a like, you know like a silly little scarf, like a like a Sophie scarf or something. Um, can be really fun in this, and it's very soft. I like that my Sophie scarf is angora because it's really fluffy and warm, even though it's tiny. And this could be a good potential option for that too. And the colorway name is Postcards from Another Day, which again I do not know what song it's from. Uh, and then. The last of my New Zealand yarn. Oh, I went to Get Flocked, which is where they gave me this cute bag. It says Get Flocked on it. Um, and then we went down to one of our last stops was in Wanaka, which is on the South Island. It's a little bit north of Queenstown. It is um, a pretty cool place. There was a place there called Wools of Wanaka. I went in and I was like, generally, like a little bit underwhelmed. It wasn't like a lot of stuff I'd normally purchase. Um, you know when you, this is a very UK thing I think, but you know when you're going somewhere and you get excited because it's a yarn store and you're like, oh yeah, yarn store, and then you go and like everything is an acrylic blend and like garish colours and nothing is local and you're just like, what is this? It was kind of one of those shops, but they had a couple of gems. They stocked the same hand dyed yarn that I got in Christchurch, um, the possum one, they had the same dyer, and then they had some hand spun. And I bought some hand spun, which I don't know why I think is really weird, but it's not very like me. Um, but I bought quite a lot of it. So there was just, the thing is, there were three colours on the shelf and I couldn't not buy all three because I thought, well, firstly, I don't really like to just knit with one skein, even though I bought one skein already. And I just couldn't wrap my head around it. So it's hand spun and hand dyed. It's 100 grams and it's a colourway clover. And these are my three skeins. How cool are they? So they're all a little bit different. Like this one has definitely got a little bit of a blue there. If you can see there's like some blue in this one. And then this one definitely feels more like, it's got some like orange, a bit more orangey. And then the third one is definitely a bit more pinky. But they definitely still work together. It's pretty consistent. I mean, the hand spun's a bit all over the place. Like some of it's pretty, it's pretty thick and thin, but in like a fun way, I think. And it was like, beyond cheap, which also I was like, I can't believe this is so inexpensive. It was $35 a skein and there's pretty much two dollars, bang on two dollars to a pound. So what is that? 17 pounds-ish for hand spun, hand dyed hand spun. I can't believe this. So I wanted to it up and then she's got an email address. Um, it's Jackie Archer is the dyer. Um, I will definitely be emailing her and telling her what I make out of it. So what I do plan to make out of it is talking of cardigans. <laughs> no, it's not what we're talking about. Talking of magazine publishing. My very first design to come in a magazine was the Viridian cardigan and it came out in Pom Pom in October. I think October. Um, and I want to rework that pattern. I like the concept of it, but there's a few things. I don't love the colours of my sample and the sample that, that I had to knit isn't my size. That's another thing with mag magazines is you knit a sample and it's never your size, unless you happen to be sample size, which I'm in the middle of everything I've had to knit has either been, like my, my liner was too big for me, my pom pom was too small, <laughs> my journal scotch yarns was too small. So I am not model size, which I was pretty aware of already, but yeah. Um, and then you get it back at the end, it doesn't fit you. It's a weird, I get why, of course, because of course it has to fit a model. Anyway, so I want to rework the Viridian. Um, I also think it'd be super good as a hand spun, for a hand spun. Now I tried to spin and I, uh, like I like it, but I don't like it enough to do it consistently. And if I have free time, I'd rather knit or sew. And I'm not that fast for, hand, for spinning. And I might come back to it in the future. It's there and I do it every once in a while, but like, it's just not, like, it doesn't give me that much joy right now. Um, but I do know people are starting to knit with it more. And the Viridian would be perfect for it. And it doesn't use too much because I think I've got enough here. So I think I've got about 600 meters and I think that should be enough. But I want to work it top down because then you can 
you know how, how far your yarn's going to go. So the plan will be to rework Viridian with this as the contrast colour um, some point later this year. It will not be until after summer at this point. Um, but I'm really excited and I think I'll probably pick like a soft beige as the contrast colour to really let this shine. And yeah, it means I can like knit the body, well knit the, do the yoke and do a little bit, then I'll do each of the sleeves and then I'll just knit until I run out of yarn. Um, and that's quite a nice way to do it, to make sure I end up with plenty. So yeah, um, and I guess that's what, 300, 300 grams of hand, hand spun, of, uh, hand spun, which I feel like when you're, I mean, I, like I say, I've very, I've only really dabbled very lightly in spinning, um, but like a whole sweater's quantity is a lot of yarn to spin, but 300 grams is like that middle amount where you've not just done like a little bit, but you've done like a bit of a project and it'd be nice to be able to use 300 grams of hand spun in something wearable. So yeah, that is the plan. Um, okay, you think that I was now done with acquisitions? I am not. Um, I don't usually have a big acquisition heavy section, but today is one, so apologies if it's not your thing. Um, I would say there won't be one next time, but I already know there's yarn on the post on its way to me, so I think there will be at least a little bit next time. But hopefully not quite so much. So, I have already shown the giant balls of yarn. I also got some um, tin lina in this colour, which I think is poppy. It just says colour 3819. I think that's poppy. Um, so it's 55% cotton, 33% viscose, 14% linen. And oh, this, this is my fun experiment. Okay. Actually, I'll do it in a minute. Let me finish this one first. And it is uh, 220 meters per 50 grams. So it's quite a light fingering, actually. Um, I will make one of my toaster samples in that, or at least I intend to. And then I got a lot of drops bell in black because I'm making a dress version of the Tulsa tank, or well, the camisole version, a midi dress. We'll see how it goes. I'm gonna convert the pattern to bot to top uh, top down. So instead of right now you like join the shoulders, I will instead do one triangle, pick up the stitches for the other side. I've done it before uh, with relative success, so I'm not too worried about it. Um, and I will be knitting. Yeah, we need to see, I think I might have to do some, right now the, the camisole, here it is. So both this one has got the edging and the square neck has got edging. The camisole, written to pattern, does not have any edging. It's a, it's a raw edge. Um, but you can, like, it tells you how, if you want to, you could pick up ribbing, you could do an eye cord, etc. I think I will have to, for the stability of the dress, add something, possibly an eye cord. Maybe just a two stitch eye cord um, to make sure that this, because it will be quite heavy. So I want to try and add some more stability up here. But, oh yeah, and then I got some of this King Cole Linendale in this red colour because my Tides t shirt is going to be these two colours, which I'm excited for. But this is the point I was going to make. I have here Drops Bell, King Cole Linendale, Sadness Garlina. Drops Bell is. 53% cotton, 33% viscose, 14% linen. Uh, Sanders Garn is exactly the same, 15, 53, 33, 14. Mm. And then King Cole Linen Linendale is 57 cotton, 30 viscose, 13 linen. So like 1% less linen, 4% more cotton, 3% less viscose. The mass doesn't matter, yes it does. Uh, it's 131 yard per 120 meters. Oh, sorry, 120 meters for 50 grams, 110 meters for 50 grams, 100 and... Where did it go? <laughs> it's not on there. Oh yeah, it's 120. Um, so yeah, like these are the exact same fiber makeup. These are the exact same yardage. And all three of them contain the same fibres. And this I think is double the price of these. Like this one is the cheapest, this is the middle, this is the, set, this is the end. And so far I find them all working practically the same. So I thought it would be interesting. It's the most express uh, I've seen of like big brands having the exact same base. 
Um, and I thought it'd be interesting to try them all. I'm knitting 100 horses anyway, I may as well try different yarns. So yeah, um, I got those two and I think that's about it. Yeah. 10 balls of this is what I think I'm gonna need for a dress. I do also have a backup like ball and a half somewhere left over from my own tank top version. Um, but yeah. So, oh, wrap up with, oh my hair is really not sitting very well. Oh well. Um, yeah, how's life been otherwise? I mean, it's been busy. We've just got back. It's been a pretty quiet week, which has been really nice to not have to, I've not been to the office any day. I've worked from home every day. I went to the gym on Wednesday and I am still sore. It is Friday. Um, it took me a long time. I'm still not back to, like, it was so painful yesterday. I couldn't really walk. Um, so we're taking it gently going back into the gym. That was probably a bit stupid of me to go quite so hard, quite so quickly. Um, which is the boat. We're moving our boat to the other coast of Scotland in two weekends. So we've got two weekends left to get all of our jobs done, which is kind of terrifying because we've got a lot to do. Um, next weekend is our big painting weekend. So basically everything else has to be done this week. But that's fine. And next weekend, oh gosh. I'm literally talking about how next weekend we've got to get all the painting done on the boat and I'm realising the next weekend is also a really good gathering. <laughs> anyway, Sunday I've got to get all the painting done. Gosh, it better not be, is the weather already public for next Sunday? Oh yeah, it's gonna be dry. I think I'm gonna have to do some research into how primers work. And there's a strong possibility I'll be leaving the Willigood gathering and going directly to our boat to prime the boat. Glamorous life I live. Um, what else has been going on? Not very much. Went to a, went to a music gig tonight. I've uh, got a few things like starting to ramp up for, for summer. Um, and otherwise, just trying to get back into the normal routine of things. I came back from Australia. And New Zealand wasn't crazy hot. It was still warmer than Scotland, but not crazy warm. Australia was pretty hot. Um, and I the pool every day and it was very nice. Um, and I've come out of Scotland being freezing cold and yeah, just cold and a bit wet and a bit miserable. So I am very excited for spring when it finally decides to spring. When spring decides to spring, when spring comes basically. Um, and until then, yeah, I'm gonna be writing out some patterns, doing lots of knitting, all of the usual. Um, I've got a couple of interesting videos. So yeah, I've got my Knitting New Zealand part two and part three still to come. I will be filming the Willy Good Gathering next weekend. I've got a fun, I've got some patterns in the atelier, which is like a booth for designing designers. Um, and I also think I have a bit of a display going on, which I've not really, I've emailed them about, but I've not heard back and I need to put maybe a today in the box. Um, I feel like there were 10 other things I had to mention and I've forgotten every single one of them. But oh well. Um, I'll be back next week with a pattern release and a new video. And until then, I hope you have a wonderful time knitting. I uh, hope you've enjoyed this. It feels a bit chaotic, but that's the first one back is always a bit chaotic, so that's okay. And I'm off to go make some coffee and get through the afternoon. I'll speak to you later.